about school examination test. And this topic is for BSA second year. It is from pathology. So let us see what is the definition of a stool. Okay, so human feces, they are also called as stools. Feces, F-A-E-C-E-S, or it can also be spelled as F-E-C-E-S. Okay, it is a plural of Latin term, fex, meaning residue. Okay, so feces, it comes, it is, uh, it is com coming from a Latin word, Me, uh, fex, which means residue. So this residue, it is uh, this tool, it is a waste residue of indigestible material. It is a waste material of the indigestible materials of an animal's digestive tract, which is expelled through the anus during defecation. Okay, so this is the definition of a stool, meaning that it is a waste material. Okay, after uh, uh, after the uh, after we have swallowed the food, the food is being digested in the uh, GI system, and then from there the uh, the, the, the it is a waste residue, all that waste material will be expelled through the anus during defecation. Okay, so that is the definition of a stool. Uh, when, a, when a newborn has passed stool, we do not call it as a stool, but we call it as meconium. Okay, so meconium is a newborn's first feces. Okay, and scatology or taprology is the study of feces. So this is about the, uh, you know, like an introduction and definition of the stool. Now let us see the collection of stool. So we require universal precautions, gloves, masks, okay. Then stool should be collected in a dry, sterilized, white mouth container. So the stool examination, uh, the, the collection of the stool should be in a dry and sterilized container. It should not be uncontaminated with urine. So it has. It should not be. Uh, uh, should should not be collected with urine or any other body secretion. It is properly named. So proper identification, proper labeling of the stool examination container should be made properly, and it should always be fresh. Okay. So uh, for better results, we also re we always need a fresh sample or a fresh stool. Now, uh, in stool examination, there are three, uh, it is classified into three examination. One is macroscopic examination, second is microscopic examination, and third is chemical examination. So, we will start with the first type, that is macroscopic examination. So, in this type of examination, you will check for the volume of the stool, okay, it should be less than 200 grams per day. Next, we will check the color of the stool, the consistency of the stool, whether it is soft, it is hard. Then we will check the order or the smell of the stool. We will check if there is any blood or mucus in the stool. And we will check for parasites and adult parasites. If there are any, uh, if any parasite, if any worms are present in the stool. So these are some of the uh, contents for microscopic examination. So let us see uh, individually. So, the normal color of the stool is yellowish brown in color. Okay, so that is a normal color. Okay, so you can see here brown, it is a normal poop color or normal stool color. Green, if the stool is green, which means that patient has taken green dyes or vegetables, patient has taken antibiotics or if there is any bacterial infection. Next, if the, if the stool is yellowish in color, means there is excessive fat or small intestine infection. If it is bright red, meaning that the patient has taken some foods which are red in color, drinks or dyes, hemorrhoids, okay, patient is having hemorrhoids, therefore there will be uh, bleeding in the stool, and bleeding, in, or if there's any bleeding in the lower digestive tract. Okay, so these, uh, in these cases, the stool will be bright red in color. Next, black or very dark brown. Okay, it means that the patient has taken some iron supplements or taken bismuth sub uh, salicyclate or patient is having any bleeding in the upper digestive tract. Next, if the stool is white or light or clay color, meaning that the patient is having uh, diarrhea and 
she has taken anti diarrheal medication or a patient is lacking bile content and if it is reddish in color meaning that is red food okay you can see here this is bright red and this is reddish so there is a difference okay so if the uh, stool is reddish in color means that the patient has taken red food drinks or dies and ble uh, bleeding in the lower gut or rectum so these are some of the uh, abnormal characteristics of uh, color of the stool now coming to the consistency so type 1 okay you can see here they are separate hard lumps like nuts that means hard to pass in case of constipation next type 2 sausage shaped but lumpy type 3 it's like a sausage but with cracks on the surface next type 4 like a sausage or a snake which is smooth and soft type type 5 soft blocks with clear cut edges okay so you can see the difference between type 1 and type 5 Okay, now type six, fluffy pieces with ragged uh, edges. On type seven, watery, no solid pieces, entirely liquid. This is seen in patient with uh, diarrhea. Okay, and separate hard lumps like nuts. These are seen in patients with having constipation. So this is the consistency of the stool. Now coming to the order of the stool, that is the smell. Okay, because uh, basically depending upon the pH of the stool and also on indole and skeletol, which are the substances that produces normal odor, these are formed by intestinal bacteria in fermentation and putrefaction. Okay, so how does how do we get the odor of the stool? It is because of the pH, because of the presence of substances like indole and skeletol. Okay, these are formed by what? By intestinal bacterial fermentation and putrefaction. So these are the, some of the reasons why we have odor in the stool. Now, a foul odor or a bad smell is caused by degradation of undigested proteins and excessive carbohydrate intake. So taking too much of carbohydrates also, and because of degradation of undigested proteins, therefore we will have bad smell in the stool. and sickly sweet odor okay if there is any sweet odor then it is how it is produced by the undigested lactose okay so these are some of the abnormal odors of the stool now so that is about microscopic now coming to microscopic examination so in microscopic examination uh, all the all the stools will be under uh, will be tested under the microscope so some of the materials we require are microscope slides cover slips sodium chloride solution logos iodine solution wooden applicator fresh stool and we need gloves so these are some of the uh, things that we require or the materials we require for microscopic examination so let us see what uh, what do we check for in microscopic examination okay so one normal values okay so the undigested food materials uh non to small amount okay starch will be absent okay in a normal uh, human being okay so these things uh, undigested food material will be non starch will be absent x cyst parasitic fragments they will be absent or non yeast will be absent and leukocytes will be absent so these are some of the uh, if these things are if these uh, if starch if yeast leukocyte if they are absent meaning that the patient is having healthy or having normal stool okay so these are some of the normal values now let us see what are the abnormal so if any parasites are present okay then uh, like round worm okay round worm hook worm tape worm pin worm or whip worm if any of these parasites are present uh in the stool okay when we have checked it under the microscopic examination then we can see it is patient is having some infection or a patient is having some uh, gi problem okay so tape worm you can see here tape worm round worm okay pin worm they like pins then we have the tape worm tape worm is very long in size and in length okay and whip worm okay so it's like a whip okay so these are some of the parasites which may or may not be present 
Okay, when we have checked under the microscope, and these are some of the uh, parasites which will be present in the abnormal stool. Now we will check for stool culture. Okay, so normal microbial flora of GI tract contains the following organisms. So these are the normal microbial flora. Gram negative like E. coli, Enterobacter, Prosteus, Pseudomonas, Aeruginosa, or bacteria. These are some of the uh, gram negative bacteria. Next, gram positive bacteria like Clostridia, Lactobacilli, Enterococci, Anaerobic, Streptococci. Okay, so these are some of the normal microbial flora. Okay, so uh, these are the normal bacteria which are present in the GM. Human feces contain approximately 10 to the power organism uh, per gram per gram wet weight as normal flora. Whereas gut bacterial pathogen, okay, they exceed 10 to the power 5 organisms per gram. Okay, so uh, why do we do a stool culture? We do it to check the presence of any gram negative or gram positive bacteria. Okay. And uh, to check the, uh, you know, the human, the uh, the organisms, how much organisms are present in the stool. Okay, it can be 10 to the power 11 organisms per gram or 10 to the power <coughs> 5 organisms per gram. Now coming, so that was about microscopic. So mainly microscopic examination, we will check for the parasites. And we will check for the, uh, we will perform a stool culture test. To check to to see if there's any gram negative or gram positive bacteria. Now coming to the chemical examination, which is the third type. Okay, so we have done with microscopic examination. We have done with macroscopic examination. So now we come to the third. It's called chemical examination. So in chemical examination, we will check for the water. What is the normal water level? What is the normal pH? Okay, any occult blood. It is a normal bile, sodium, chloride, potassium level, nitrogen, fatty acids in the stool. So let us see the normalcy or the normal characteristics. First, water. Up to 75% it is normal. pH 5.8 to 7.5 is normal. Occult blood, RS uh, negative. Okay, RS is negative. Then in bile, it is negative in adults, whereas it is positive in children. This is normal. Sodium 5.8 to 9.8 milli, equi uh, milli equivalent per 24 hours. Okay, chlorides it ranges between 2.5 to 3.9 milli equivalent per 24 hours. Potassium 15.7 to 20.7 milli equivalent per 24 hours. Lipids of fatty acids 0 to 6 grams per 24 hours, and nitrogen less than 2.5 gram per 24 hours. So this is a normal. Uh, characteristics okay, of, uh, of water of these various chemicals. Okay, so these are the normal levels. Now coming to pH. Now what will happen if there is an increased pH and if there is a decreased pH? Okay, so if the pH increases then it is alkaline in nature and if the pH is decreased then it is acidic in nature. So if pH is increased Okay, if it is alkaline, means that the patient is having colitis. Okay, inflammation of the colons. Patient is taking any antibiotics. Patient is having villus adenoma, or there is excessive proteins in the diet. So when these uh, patients, okay, when these conditions are present, then it means there is increased pH in the stool. That is, it is alkaline in nature. Now, if decreased pH, okay, if it is acidic in nature, so what are the uh, conditions that patient will have decreased pH? First is, if there is any malabsorption of carbohydrates, malabsorption of the fats, and disaccharide, disaccharidase deficiency. Okay, so in these are the three conditions where the pH will be decreased and it is acidic in nature. Now coming to the fats in the stool. So if there are any fatty acids or lipids in the stool, okay, there uh, and some of these are associated with malabsorption syndrome. So these are some of the conditions where fats will be present in the stool or lipids will be present in the stool. 
So, first is obstructive jaundice, second, celiac sprue or non tropical sprue, third, Crohn's disease, fourth, cystic fibrosis, fifth, Whipple's disease, sixth, enteritis and pancreatic diseases, and seven is surgical removal of section of intestine. So, in such conditions, the fatty acids or the lipids will be present in the stool. So these are some of the uh, chemical examination, okay, some of these characteristics that we will check in chemical examination. So we have come to the end. I hope this is clear. So there are three examination tests. One is microscopic examination. Second is microscopic examination where we will check these, uh, the contents of the stool under microscope. Okay, by using these materials and you will check for any presence of parasites or you will check for the gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria. Okay, in microscopic exam, you will check for volume, how much is, what is the volume, what is the consistency, what is the order, the smell, or is there any blood or is there any parasite. Now, coming to the chemicals. In chemical examination, we will check for the water, what is the normal water, what is the pH, normal pH, sodium, chloride, potassium, any lipids, how much lipids are present in the stool, nitrogen, or is there any bile which is present or absent. Okay, so these are some of the uh, characteristics for chemical examination. So this is all about stool, te uh, stool test or stool examination. So I hope this is clear. Okay, thank you.